what's up everyone? I'm Kira McGran, a queer sideboard game designer living in Columbus, Ohio, and I am extremely busy this week, so this is going to be a fast video because I wanted to talk about some tropes. Please like and subscribe down below if you haven't already and check out my Patreon where I release these videos and some behind the scenes design stuff with what I'm working on in my games. So I saw Widows last weekend, which is an amazing movie. I don't know why the world isn't exploding about how great this movie is. I mean, it's just really good. Basically, it's a heist movie. I don't really like heist movies all that much, which is hilarious because I love cyberpunk and usually heist and cyberpunk go together pretty well, a la the sprawl role-playing game by Hamish Cameron. But um, yeah, this, this was a great heist because basically the premise of it uh, was that uh, the main characters are a bunch of uh, women whose husbands are criminals and they all were just on this job and, and killed on this job they just did. And so, um, you know, one of their people they were supposed to pay comes to collect from one of their widows, the, the main character who's played by Viola Davis. Um, and so she gets together the team of widows and they go to steal the money back. Um, so they can pay back this one person and also be able to afford to live for the rest of their lives because their husbands stole all their money, basically. It's amazing! <laughs> What's so clever about this movie is that it's not just a lady heist. Um, it, it does multiple things uh, by subverting many layers of different tropes, and it's really smart the way that it does it. Uh, the cast is amazing, by the way. It stars Viola Davis, uh, Michelle Rodriguez, and uh, two other women I'm not as familiar with. Uh, a white woman and a black woman who's younger and I think is a British actor. Um, but the characters are just great. So it takes, one, one thing it does with the tropes is that it takes the normal tropes of a heist and just puts women in those roles. So Viola Davis is the boss, you know? And then we've got the driver, who's played by the younger woman. Um, we've got the face, who's like the white woman. She's like sexy and able to manipulate people, but not in like a male gaze way, which is so satisfying. And um, Michelle Rodriguez, I can't remember what she does. I think she's like, she does a little bit of everything. She's kind of like the, the every person, I can't remember. So it kind of puts them into the those heist roles, you know, that you'd normally see in any other heist where a bunch of men were playing those roles. So success number one, they're not, uh, their trope isn't the woman in the heist, their trope is the heist characters in the heist. While it does this, it simultaneously retains this intersectional feminist op uh, oppression that is always around. Um, so that you understand what it's like to be a woman trying to pull a heist. So it's not just that there are women in men's roles, there are women who are actually women in the story. It's, it's great. So what I mean by this is that they showcase catcalling of the characters in multiple situations just as a random side effect that's happening as they're walking or running down the street in their neighborhoods. Um, they show how two of the women are single parents and um, being a parent is a huge part of the story actually and how you're supposed to you know, support your children in addition to being a badass um, heist doer, you know. Um, it also showcases how they were um, how they were partners to their spouses. You know, they, the, the specific emotional work that they had to do in each relationship and how it differed depending on the person or the character. And then it also showcased their vulnerability. Like, they, their husbands were dead and if they were men, they would have control over their finances. But the men literally stole all their money or wasted it away through various criminal activities and left nothing for them. So they have to now fend for themselves and their children, which is something that you don't see in a, in a men's story about heists. So I thought that was so smart. It also allowed them to be emotionally vulnerable. So, you know, in the story, at the very beginning, their husbands die and they're grieving and trying to process that grief and the immediate PTSD that they're experiencing from like these criminals coming to collect and the various um, effects of their husbands dying on their everyday lives. Um, so, <laughs> you know, in, in, 
in dude stories, you don't often see them processing those emotions. Um, sometimes they do, and that's cool because men should have emotional vulnerability too. But the way that they showcased the emotional vulnerability in this movie was so good. They um, were allowed to cry and feel loss and pain in multiple um, uh, scenes. And then in the next scene, be tough and badass and communicative and smart. Just really great um, overall realistic emotional portraits of characters. They also just did a fantastic job with showing intersections with race in this movie. Like, um, they talk mostly about um, like black communities in Chicago, which is where it takes place. But it focuses, it zeroes in on, um, you know, this one, uh, this one hair dressing shop where um, there's a black woman who owns it, but she's only able to own it by taking loans from a white politician who's very corrupt and hates black people. And the, the younger main character, the driver, she like works at this hair uh, salon and you kind of see the interaction of where they're getting their money from and how you, what they have to sacrifice to be a small business owner and the, the racial oppression that they're experiencing that makes everything much harder for them than any of the men in the story. Um, I just thought that was great. <laughs> it like showcased that. And then it showcases multiple, th there are many different black characters in this story. So it's not just like the one story of this one black woman, but like many, many black women in different class situations and family situations and working through different issues. So that, that was just really good. I think they did a really good job with it. Why am I telling you all this? I think that these are really good things to do in role-playing games too. Um, you know, if you're thinking of doing a heist, consider, um, you know, when you're considering the gender of the characters that you might play or write about, um, consider not only subverting the regular tropes that we might see um, of, you know, of race, gender, sexuality, anything, um, but also consider when you're writing those tropes or playing those tropes, how being that specific gender might impact that character. What are the intersections of issues that they're dealing with? And how can you portray that in an interesting and cool way that doesn't involve the regular tropes that we see all the time that are harmful? That's my rant. Go see Widows. This is my commercial for Widows. <laughs> I actually don't even know if it's in the theater anymore. Um, it's just got an all-star cast, super great. Um, a lot of uh, really cool people, directed by uh, a black dude, written by a woman. It's just really good. Uh, and this <laughs> this is my video. I'm, I'm a little hyper. I've had some coffee and I'm trying to do a million things. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I'll see you next vid.